Hey fam, aloha, I'm back. This is another episode of the Revolution Podcast. I'm Kevin Orris, your host and your favorite philosopher, I trust. In this episode, we're going to be talking about sex, which I had to block out because Facebook and Instagram especially are not really interested in the massive creative beauty that actually created all of us, which isn't that absurd. Um, But my guest is Genevieve Rudolph, an incredible next level thinker and practitioner and specialist in the realm of all things sexuality, whether that's sexual intimacy, sexual magic, transmutation. So I'm going to bring Genevieve on now and we're going to get rocking, rocking and rolling. If you're tuning in on Facebook, I'd love if you share the video out with your tribe, tag somebody who can probably benefit from this. Hello, Hello queen. queen. Hi. Are you hearing the feedback? Because we might need to have some because I'm hearing a echo of echo myself. myself. Okay. I should have mentioned this in that time, but here we are. Here we are. Here we are. I'm sorry for the feedback. We're doing, We're the, doing thing. the thing. We're doing the dance. I love the dance. Look. I'm trying not to talk so it's not like. Okay, that sounds better. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you you hear me? Now you can hear me. Can you hear me? Bueno. Awesome. Muy bueno. Beautiful. Technological things. Yay. (laughs) The reality. Thank you for having me on. It's so good to see you after your your sabbatical. (laughs) Yeah, I've been in a magical tropical jungle sabbatical where like real life is better than anything on my newsfeed. And I'm not sorry about it. It's well, because it's the truth, right? <laughs> so, it's real. Yeah. It's real and and in the right now. So that's so good. Yay. Yeah. I'm so happy <laughs> to be playing with you again, Genevieve. And I was just introducing you. I wonder if you would want to introduce yourself a little bit. What is your hottest tagline or archetypal handle right now that you want to share with the world? Mm, um I'm here to help you bring your darkness to light in sex, right? So mm. I, I'm playing now in the realm of not hiding anything and any part of you so that you can show up fully. And in showing up fully, we then get to have everything that we've ever desired, right? And that just falls in. That falls in. That's like a byproduct. Um, mm. but the, the work that I'm doing lately is, is let me see all of you, like show up all of you. We do it through sex, and then boom, everything will just trickle down in magic. So Amazing, amazing. Yeah. So there's so many places I want to go here, and I titled this, you know, How to Hack Your Life with Sex, or How to mm-hmm. Hack Your Life Through Sex. That kind of is the dominant intersection for me of, like, health, wellness, high-performance flow states, which I've spent a lot of time yes. loving that, and the deep embodiment work, somatic work, sexuality, intimacy, eroticism, like where they meet is this beautiful, magical, potent reality um, that you just spoke to, which really for me is like when we integrate the shadow or those parts of us that are darkness, um, that's where the real magic is. And that's where the real potency is. It's not in the, the safe containers of like bypassing or like, you know, navigating with, you know, oh, I'm all the way up here and everything's good and I got it all under control. It's really that primal dragon. I, I, I conceive yeah. it as a dragon or the Kundalini Shakti that must be worked with and confronted in a good way. Otherwise, it'll rule our life through fate and we'll call it unconsciousness and it'll really take us for a ride, especially in sexuality. Well, the thing is, right, like that primal force that comes up in once you have a sexual awakening that primal force is not safe Mm. it is it is scary which is why so many people don't go there right and on the other side of that it's like a free fall you can't grab onto anything when you're in that that awakened when your sexuality is flowing like that's it there's nowhere to hide there's nowhere to go and um 
that's what I want everyone to wake up to and experience because that experience for me changed my entire life. Um, and now people are popping like flies all over the place, right? <laughs> and then, right, so it's right. pretty. And the other thing that came up for me when you were saying that was just that this this shadow self, right? That that's within us. Our spirit, if you really get like to a high, high truth level, which I know you operate in the same way that I do, which is why I adore you. This high, high truth level, um, spirit really doesn't give a shit if it's pain or pleasure. Right. Spirit actually doesn't care. It just wants <laughs> to dance. It just wants to dance. It's not looking for the light. It's not. That's not right. what spirit's doing. Spirit's like, hey, you're a human. I'm in you, right? I'm embodied in you. Can we go and dance together? Can we go and find some stuff to get our fingers dirty with, right? And and sometimes that's like deep love and joy and ecstatic feeling. And sometimes that's like tender grief and rage. And, mm. and all of that is the same level in a spirit's mind. Mind, they don't really have minds, but in terms of spirit flow, that's the same level of, um, of, of life and yeah. passion and purpose. So I love that. Yeah. And it's just about finding the edges, like finding the edges where you haven't yet gone to so that um, everything can be, be there, fully explored. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. And, and as we know in the physical realm, and this shows up a lot in kink and BDSM, the, the line between pleasure and pain is very fine and emergent and quite ecstatic and transcendent for those of us that have experienced that. And yeah, I just want to go straight into your heroine's journey, Genevieve, and, <laughs> and, and like contextualize what you just said, because it sounds like very powerful. And I think I've heard pieces, but I would love for you to share here, you know, part of your awakening process, why did you get into this work and how have you become the magical you know, empress that you are now? Like, what was the formative dark night of the soul? Hmm. Thank you. Um, so I started from the bottom is the way I see it. A lot of people start in this kind of light place and then they choose to go into like plant medicine, ceremony stuff. Sure. Like, I started from the human experience of deep pain um, from the second that I, I was conceived, my energy body always felt unsafe and was then, I then experienced multiple abuse and trauma throughout my whole life um, sexually because of course, that's what spirit wanted to dance in for me, right? And so what happened, as I talk about it, I can feel like, ooh, because it um, was such a shaping of my conditioning what happened was there was never a moment in my childhood or before the awakening where my body felt safe. It, it just, it wasn't there. Um, men, I couldn't even be around men at all. If I smelled a man, I would go into a PTSD trigger. Mm. Um, I spent a lot of time in, um, hospitals and mental hospitals. I spent a lot of time, you know, in drug overdose scenarios and spending the majority of my like early adulthood and teenagehood just trying as best I could to beat up my body because my body was so terrifying that I was like, if I can just, I want to run so hard away from this world. And I got really good at it. I was a really good runner. <laughs> I, I perfected that. Um, I married a woman because of the fear of men and um, couldn't, my sexual experience, my first sexual experience was rape. And um, from that moment onward, and I was young, from that moment onward, men, the only sexual experiences that I had with men were under massive drug use, right? Where I was pretty much blackout. So with a woman, married a woman, um, was a professional dominatrix at that time, which was the beginning of the awakening for me, actually. Mm. It, it provided oh, such a cathartic container for me to learn how to access my rage 
which I had no clue. I just internalized all of it, right? I learned how to fill up the room with my presence, which was this incredible feeling that I, and I was actually taught this. I was trained really beautifully. I was I'm really grateful for the training um, of how to, how to hold the space of, of you and your client and really, and provide that safety. It was so healing. And then to have men come to me and ask for exactly what was done to me, but on the other side, right? Wow. Like the, the spirit dance there of just, and the, we were conscious, like we knew what was going on. There were no drugs allowed. It was very safe container. Like the BDSM community is brilliant at that for the most part. Brilliant sure. at creating like, here's what we need to make this safe because you're playing in edges. And so, I mean, the number of times that I got to experience men during that time, men in like deep vulnerability where they would just lie at my feet and cry mm. um, or, or men in fear. These are things I never saw. I grew up in inner city Baltimore where I only saw the machismo guys. I didn't understand right. that there was a soft place in a man that, that was, you know, I could tap into and, and relate to. So, um, and then obviously the dominatrix work also just building up my sense of worth, right? Because these guys were there to mirror for me who I, who I was and who I didn't know I was at the time. So mm. I did that, was married to the woman. The, that relationship ended because both of us shut our sex down um, because it was safer, which a lot of people do because sex is the most powerful force. And it's terrifying, <laughs> right? right? As I said earlier. Um, so that one ended. And then I, that was the beginning of me tapping into my sexual journey. And um, what I started to do was recognize that it's not that my pleasure didn't live in my body. It's not that I had to go find it. It's that I had to figure out what did this particular body and nervous system need in order to relax, Mm. Um, because everyone's body is really different. And so I went on this journey of just like, what is it? And, and for me, um, it was learning. Do you, are you familiar with the erotic blueprints? I am. A little bit. So it was learning, it was learning those, right? So, mm. um, for the viewers briefly, there's five of them and there's the, so the energetic blueprint, the way that the energetic blueprint relaxes and releases is through like stillness and space and light touch which that's my current blueprint um so i know if i'm needing that flow then i gotta go to a place where i'm like separate and i'm still and i'm not talking and i'm just eye gazing mm. like that's that's my drop in that wasn't where i was when i first started the journey when i first started the journey i was kinky and kinky's um, their way of relaxation is actually through intensity, mm. right? Through either like fantasy intensity where it's psychological, like all of a sudden things become really intense or it's um, through sensation-based intensity. And that relaxed my body the same way that eye gazing now relaxes my body. Wow, what a, what a flip there. Right, and, and neither is better or worse. It's just sure. where my nervous system was at the time. It's just, it only knew a certain way and funny enough the kink allowed me to start to connect because mm. it could then it could deregulate me enough that i could start to open my heart and start right. to relax in the pleasure right and then just for the people because i only mentioned two there's also sensuals sensuals are going to be relaxed the best through like like a, a heavy touch like a soothing massage that's going to be their turn on space um or like skin to skin type stuff and then um, the sexuals actually need orgasm and penetrative sex in order for the nervous system to deregulate you can always spot a sexual when they're like really pent up and then mm. they have sex and then after the sex they're like oh, and they drop into themselves right? right and energetic is more themselves before the sex wow. like in the looking and in the gazing and in the loving and then they have the sex and then they usually freak out because it's so overwhelming <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and that's when they need more of that energetic love, that, that eye gazing, that connection. Um, right. and, and then there's a fifth type, which are very few, but I always mention it in case you are this and they're misunderstood. It's a shapeshifter. And so the shapeshifters, 
are turned on by all of it and they they actually need all of the things i mentioned all, pretty much all at once wow. <laughs> so i learned that started doing that to myself um regularly starting to take to find my own priestesshood through the blueprint touch through touching my body um learning what where are the keys where my body is not resistant and then finding there were some places on my body where i had to hold it and release and cry or scre scream or rage right like that was there too and yeah. I started a very dedicated practice where I was constantly pretty much tuning into my sex and being like, where is she? Where is she today? How can I find more pleasure? Hmm. Right? Where do I need to go to find more pleasure? Is it where in my body can I pull that out? Um, and I, nowadays, it's like I'm in constant turn on the wind blows and I orgasm. So uh -huh. and that's a training, that's a wiring, which is amazing, because the woman that I was before the awakening, I never, or I didn't, didn't even know what pleasure was. Sex for me was only painful. Mm. That was it. And, and so the way that the bodies, we can really map our bodies neurologically massively differently, simply through touch. Right. And the, the brain will rewire itself. And now I'm on this, in this place of, I'm trying to expand because the more, the more ways that you can get turned on, the more that you can expand um, into holding everything at once and being really full of yourself. And so my latest craze with myself has been, let me put myself into situations that are seemingly unpleasurable, like that people would not normally like. Right. So for example, I do a lot of five rhythms dance, right? And so I'll be on the dance floor and someone will start dancing with me and normally like you can tell by the vibe that all the women are like this fucking guy right you can tell <laughs> and so i choose to stay in it i choose to stay in the discomfort and i feel into my body where can i find the pleasure where can i find the pleasure how can i actually claim this space and not be a victim know that he's not doing anything to me he's just putting like he's just like that it's just insinuating an, a reaction from me in my sure. body and then I end up getting to release something that I didn't even know I had, right? And so it could be something like an energetic discomfort or something like, um, you know, I was getting a massage last night and it was, I love the deep tissue stuff because I guess it's the kinky, I like to go submissive. Um, and he's like in my glute, like, ah, oh, you know, and it's the, it's the painful, <laughs> like, I don't know if you ever had that, but it's like, oh yeah, fuck, why am I paying for this, right? That's the first reaction. <laughs> um, and, that, and then I did the same thing. I was like, where's the pleasure in it? And I found it like at the back of my neck. I found it in hearing his breath. I found it in the bottoms of my toes. I felt the, you know, and you just start to, wow. and that way the world gets to never be painful. And pain actually isn't even a thing mm. anymore. Which, so you mentioned the awakening and I went on a full run around to get there. Um, Beautiful. But the awakening, the awakening experience was after a few years of doing that daily like protocol on myself. And then one day everything clicked. This was not very long ago, which feels a little funny to say because it <laughs> feels like it feels like this should have been ages ago, but it wasn't, it was only last year. Um, and I was with my body. I was with my vagina um, doing deep work on myself with some people there guiding me. And I went into a completely altered state of consciousness without any drugs where um, I started talking to God. She came down. Okay. Um, she showed me my entire journey. She showed me all the parts of me. She showed me the little girl that's afraid. She showed me the runner. She showed me all the, the rapes and the violations. She gave me the entire story and allowed me to feel, feel which was amazing and then she showed me where I'm going she showed me what the vision is for my life she spoke to me directly and she said here's what you're doing <laughs> mm. <laughs> here's what you're doing and she said it's gonna happen even if you try not to do it it's just gonna birth out right. of you right um and that was amazing and then she gave me a few really incredible truth bombs which um to this day now what was so powerful about this is 
you know, I've done so many drugs in my life and I've done, you know, some of the ones that are also meant to bring us to clarity and truth and done that intentionally. And those are great. And then you go away and you have to integrate it and then you lose it. Right. right? right. The sexual awakening didn't go anywhere and still hasn't gone right. anywhere. So, you know, a few of the things she mentioned was the first thing was that Genevieve, you're actually not, you weren't ever violated. Those men actually didn't take anything from you. Mm. And she showed that to me. And she said, look at your light. It didn't go anywhere. That's a complete misperception. And that hasn't gone like that's right. She also showed me how safety is bullshit, which was great. <laughs> right. She showed me that there's nothing good or bad that even like, even, even men who rape, for example, because that's the one place where my before this, where I could go into victimhood, that they're not bad. They're not bad. They're not bad people. It's a dance and they're misstepping. That's what she said to me. She said they're misstepping and she showed it the whole picture. And, wow. um, and I, and all of a sudden I went, oh, it's a big dance. Right. And then she also said, yeah. And all the little missteps we, she's like, it's, that's not really the point. Like we don't need to really focus on them that much. It's not the point because they're just missteps. You're not, you're still whole. They're not going anywhere. Mm. Um, I mean, there's, there were so many other truth bombs, but those are the ones that are coming to me right now where it was just like, I felt, I felt the divinity within my own body in a way that I'd never experienced before. Right. And now when I look in the mirror, um, I can love myself in a way that I've never experienced. And since that awakening, here's where the life hacking happens. Since that awakening, money is dropping to me without, I don't even say anything. Clients are coming to me. I don't, I'm not, I'm just having orgasms. Like I'm not doing anything. Mm. Um, love is showing up in my life and these beautiful, I mean, meeting, get, meeting people like you, right. Is coming into my life. And, right. and it, it is, um, there's nothing to do. And that's what sex gets to bring you. That there's at least for women, there's nothing to do. Yeah. Right. The magnetics so, of it, the beautiful magnetics of a turned on realized woman, the goddess embodied. I mean, I don't even know where to begin with the transmission you just gave. And maybe there's not, maybe there's nothing to unpack or, you know, I'm just going to trust that like who is meant to receive that, just receive that. And I'm so grateful for you sharing. It felt very like vulnerable and transcendental and psychedelic <laughs> and also like, like real, like raw, yeah. like the shit of human existence, you know, like, you know, I wouldn't wish rape on anyone. And like, I've, yeah. I've done enough work and witnessed enough people and myself mainly to know that like, yeah, the perpetrator, the predator, the killer isn't within me and within exactly. every man and woman. And so exactly. once you see that, you can hold even those, those people in innocence and know that like hurt people hurt people. And it's not like when it's, when we take it personally, and this has been my personal journey with sex and like infidelity and being betrayed and all that. And like, letting that um, actually take me down in a downward spiral because I was clinging with the personality mm. and taking it very personally. And I think that's where a lot of the trauma gets created. And there's all this like legacy trauma and lineage trauma around shame and like sexual repression and all that. I mean, that's a whole nother piece yeah. of this. But what you're saying is like, what I was hearing is not only is sexuality the most powerful force in the universe, um, it literally created us. It's available in the body at all times. Yes. Via energy, touch, breath, you know, psychology, spirituality. And it is productive of some of the most powerful, life-changing, altered states mm -hmm. of consciousness that you can have mm -hmm. without any medicine, substance, without a shaman. Mm -hmm. You know, this is like, <laughs> this is the energetic birthright of humanity. And... Yeah. You know, it's funny, as you described the blueprints, too, it's like there's a lot of access points into it. Yeah. And I think especially for women, because men and women's sexuality is obviously different. I mean, there's yeah. still a core energetic that's the same. But for right. women, um, I found in my life, I can almost 
instinctively and instantly tell if a woman's in, in touch with that energy yeah. just by the way she sits in her body or how she moves yeah. and wow wow yeah. i mean there's I, I would love for you to speak to the meta conversation right now post me to with the female sexual embodiment and like what are you seeing in your work because this mm. is something like if i could have a a, a nickel or a Bitcoin for every time someone asks me a question on Messenger, in a session, whatever, in an event. This is the number one question. Billions of women, or seemingly billions, millions of women are like, how do I embody goddess level sexuality? Why aren't men meeting me in that? And I know we've talked about this a little bit on your um, panel, but like, what is, what's your dominant feeling on that right now? Given everything mm -hmm. you just shared, especially about the orgasm and about how to access the God consciousness through sex. Well, it's, I don't know where we can we learn this conditioning from, but we're all afraid, right? And the reason that we're not tapping into it, if you, so speaking to the women, the amount of pain that you think will overtake you and consume you is so deep in your mind that you won't allow yourself to go there. And men, just want to call the men out for a second, men are also afraid of you experiencing that, <laughs> right? So men are tiptoeing, doop, 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 don't want to hurt her, don't want to hurt her, right? Don't want to like instigate any of her rape trauma, right? Mm. Thank you, men, thank you for doing that. And that's not what we need, right? And right. women, it's, it's time for you to dive into the pain. Mm. That is the only way out. That was the only way out for me was like, okay, I'm going to sit here and feel like I'm dying. Wow. Like I'm, I'm going to be in that level of deep pain. And I don't know why we think pain will kill us. I don't know why. Well, some and pain does. It's like a survival mechanism. Does. Yeah. But like, so having given birth, right? I'm a mother. I have a three-year-old and having given birth and experienced the contraction and the pain of a contraction, right? When you're in it, you actually think you're dying. Like my mental calibration was like, Genevieve, you may die, right? The only way that you can get through the birth is to recognize what's going to be on the other end of it, that you're going to have a child to hold. I kept screaming, let me hold my fucking child. Like that was my, <laughs> like, my mantra. <laughs> it wasn't very chill. Um, and, and I would say the same with knowing that the, to clear out the pain, there needs to be a strong understanding and, and belief that you'll get this bliss on the other end. Mm. Because if you don't think you'll even get there, then you're not going to let yourself dive to the depth of, of the pain right. that needs to happen. And so oftentimes it's why, you know, there's some sort of guide that's there for us who is someone who's been to the depth and then can say, look, here's where you're going. Right. right? Um, which is the purpose of guides <laughs> really. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing I'm trying to think of there's anything with me too. I mean, the other thing is to just recognize that we're not victims. It's really, I can say it over and over and over again. We're not victims. We're women. It seems to be at the core. Like I mean, of the whole conversation is like right. who gave away their power to who, who took power, victim, perpetrator, savior, triangle, you know, this, none this of kind it's of real. Stuff. None of that right. shit even is even real. Like none of that. <laughs> like like okay, so so everyone is a perpetrator and everyone is a victim and we're yeah. all actually none of them. And and we we can't we it's I remember when someone said to me, my my mentor said, you know, you're not actually a victim. And I got really angry and I moved through my shit for a while when she said that to me. Um, and so I get it. Like I get the resistance to wanting to, to own that. Once we recognize that the divinity within us is so much brighter than anything that any one person can take away, even when we die, it doesn't go anywhere. When we can recognize that, then fear and victimhood goes away. And then mm. women we get to show up fucking fully because we're not afraid anymore. It's like, I right. can't get hurt. I can't get hurt. 
I'm not really scared of it. I'm like, yeah, so I'll dance with the darkness. I'll dance with, with men that, you know, like, I don't know, maybe we'll be like, oh no, that man has a funky energy. It's like, I don't care. I want to see what's there. Like, where are we going here? What's in this? What can I learn? What can my spirit experience in this moment? Mm. I'll dance with that. I'll dance with deep love. That's really what we're scared of. Right. Right? And well, it's like that Miriam Williamson quote. It's yeah. like, we're actually afraid of our light and like our mega superpowers and our like titanhood. Yeah. More than like, you know, being consumed by pain. And I think this yeah. is, this is really valuable. And, and I want to, I want to speak to those listening right now that hear the like, you're not a victim and like pain and darkness are meant to be danced with. And like, they call bullshit and they're like, well, there's people right, right now that are dying of X, Y, Z. And then the children in Africa get brought up and like, like serial rape victims, like, mm -hmm. yes, yes. And like, no matter how horrific the suffering, and I think the best example of this, what's coming to mind is Victor Frankl and Man's mm -hmm. Search for Meaning. You know, mm -hmm. he's, at, he's at Auschwitz, ground zero of horrific genocide. And what he noted just by observation and studying himself and through prayer was the people that survived that and actually come out of it with gold and like transmute that trauma are those that attach to meaning and take responsibility and step into what I call, you know, the creator or creatress consciousness, mm -hmm. which is that mm -hmm. I'm in this experience, you know, maybe I wouldn't choose it for a Sunday afternoon, but <laughs> I can respond to it and alchemize what's happening, no matter how violent or dark to create gold. And that's the power of like the human consciousness. And you know, until you claim that power, and I don't, I don't, I don't pretend that I'm like fully claimed it. Like I still slip into victim from time to time because mm -hmm. life, something happens. But I got until you, help you. <laughs> <laughs> until until I've claimed that, I'll talk about I. But this is, I imagine, this is true for many people listening. Until I've claimed that part of me, that takes full responsibility for my entire environment and everything that's happening to and for me. Until that is is like seated in meaning and anchored, like. I'm not going to create my best work. I'm not going to live creatively. I'm not going to have good sex. I'm not going to be in a healing modality for myself mm -hmm. and others in my community. Mm -hmm. And that's just yeah. true. That just yeah. seems to be universal truth. And I'm curious, Genevieve, like how, how you would invite someone in victim consciousness in any way like what, what, what is the switch? I mean, we've talked about birth as initiation. We've talked about altered states. You know, let's let's frame it in like the hacking mentality, right? Mm -hmm. Specifically mm -hmm. with your shadow and sex. What are some mm -hmm. ways to hack this and step into that directly? Yeah. Um, so one thing too that came through, I'm going to answer the question. And one thing that Beautiful. came to me was the removal of the eye, right? Mm. The removal, like once we recognize that we're not, I'm not Genevieve, I'm just character Genevieve, right? You're just right. Char character Kevin and we're just, we're the same person and we're just maneuvering um right that is like oh then i don't none of this is actually like okay fine right like it's whatever right. <laughs> it's kind of what it is now how do we get there though so i don't those of you that heard my story already i got there through my body i can't get there through my mind women you have the most transformational alchemical stuff already in you the second that you tap into your yoni, it is like magic. And men, you heal through ours. That's how we work it. So, so for a woman not to be tapped in, right? There are so many nerve endings and so much wiring that can be done. It is out of this world. Like I have had experiences touching a woman, being with a woman um, and just moving a centimeter. And then all of a sudden a new memory pops up and we're healing karmic shit and like we're moving through like all this, right? And then I move another centimeter and all of a sudden she's yelling at me as if I'm her mother. And then we move mm. another centimeter and all of a sudden, and it's, that's the level of power that is inside of your body. And you don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> like it's, it's right, right here. Um, and so the hacking would be like, say hello to your vagina. <laughs> 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 right? The hacking would wow. be spend time daily to talk to her and mm. and what i do when i'm listening to my truth right to myself is i listen not only for the truth but i also listen for all the parts of me 
the little girl parts of me that are terrified and I let them speak. And in, so for example, I might have, you know, be doing my self intimacy practice and notice that, you know, three o'clock left side of my vagina on the outer labia, all of a sudden the little girl in me comes up and she's scared of abandonment. And I go, Hey baby, what do you need? Talk to me. What are you scared of? Where do you want to go? What are we doing? And she takes me on this whole journey and I watch her running with her backpack on and she's like, fuck everyone who always leaves me. And like, right. And, and so she's, she's doing that dance and I get to just love her and I just love her more. And then I just love her more. And then I just love her more women, especially I work mostly with women. We have a well of love inside of our bodies that is, it is un it doesn't end. It's, it's like, yes. like constant. And, you get to love the parts of you forever. So we don't have to change them, fix them, right? There's a part in me that wants to murder. I love yeah. her. She's badass. She gets lots of shit done. She's awesome. Yeah. Right? She's good at setting boundaries and showing up on yeah. time. Like she's great. And I get to like fully celebrate and love her. And the only way for me that I tap into those parts is through, through my yoni right? Because that's mm. where they show up. The wiring goes there in women. Right. It goes right there. It's this, it's amazing. Um, and a hack for money, go into the, um, go Come on into now. the, yeah, go, go, go anus, go deep into anus. You huh. will like men, your prostate is your money gold mind. You'll become okay. a millionaire if you own that, right? It is there. It is a gift for you. Mm. Um, women, that's your rootedness into your safety in your body. If you don't feel safe in your body, it's because your anus hasn't opened and we no. haven't draw, 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 really let the energy move down. That safety in your body will then lead to money. Right? Root chakra. So, uh, I'm doing a, a, in a few weeks, me and Sigourney Weldon are going to do a whole live on just anal, the magic wow. of anal play. Um, because we wow. both, she does like, she does anal work with like, eggs and the whole nine um it is it is super that one's super important um but all women are just like we're a forest of magic <laughs> so yeah. so the ha that's the hacking that's the hacking is and and you know again if you need a guide to get you to remind you of light then get one um it's not needed but if right. you feel like you do there are women who have have been through the depths of the pain and been through the depths of the suffering and no light and can shine that back on you as you move yes. through that. So. so beautiful. And there, there you have it folks. <laughs> like this isn't, this isn't abstract. It's not compl complicated or complex. It doesn't have to be. It's very so simple. simple and grounded. And this is actually what we find in most mystical doctrines, most esoteric doctrines. And really even the profane religions is like the universe as above, so below is the body and your body mm -hmm. is the microcosm of the macrocosmos. Yes. And of course, the sexual <sighs> organs where the most nerve endings are right. and the most ability to actually move energy in your body, like whether it's hormonal, whether it's endocrine, whether it's nervous system energy, whether it's like goosebumps and like that, <laughs> that sense of tingle and like, woo, that, like <laughs> that rising and descending energy. Like it's pretty fucking simple. Yeah. It's in your body. It's in your lingam and it's in your yoni. Yeah. And then it's yeah. bo in both of our root chakras. Yeah. It's in that anal play. I mean, I love that yeah. you brought that up. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> at, at Envision Festival, I did like my first stand up routine ever, just spontaneously <laughs> after like an all night epic just journey of freestyle and dance and breath. And there were a lot of jokes about like rose quartz strap ons and like obsidian <laughs> strap ons, like opening <laughs> certain entrepreneurs. <laughs> for yes. And it was like, it was so good. It was so good. I don't know. <laughs> it's so, I mean, my, I opened, so just my own personal experience. The first time that I had anal sex, that was not like, you know, the rape. <laughs> it was like pleasurable where I could have it inside of my body. Um, and pleasure. Two weeks later, I hit my first six figures um, in my biz, Boom. and and it was just it was like duh, of course, like duh, Boom. and <laughs> this is how it works. Um, so it's um, 
there's a power there. And I, I just, I wish everyone would wake up to it because the universe is inside of you and there's nothing outside. There's nowhere we need to go. Right. It, it's like the seeking disappears. Yes. It goes, so, there's not, as you don't have to buy anything. You don't have to do anything. Like you're just, no. you're good. You don't even have to go to like the Himalayas or the Amazon and like sit nope. with, with like, that's a beautiful pathway. And like, I'm personally interested in it and I've done some of that, but like, it's not even necessary in your no. bedroom tonight yep. with intention and guidance by yourself. Yes. Especially women. There's yes. a yoni verse waiting for you to like <laughs> show up and ask her what she needs and expand your consciousness to like yep. the highest heavens and also the darkest depths where like all the treasure yeah. is. And yeah. yeah, Genevieve, I feel like we could go on forever, but I want to move to something um, that I love doing now in interviews, which is like a lightning round. So the invitation okay. here is just to answer the questions as quickly as possible. And okay. we're just going to like blast through some epic little questions that I've been playing with. So the first okay. one is you could be any goddess, god, archetype from all mythology in the world. Who would you be? Aphrodite. Aphrodite. Wow. That's literally what I was thinking. I was like, it's a pretty obvious one, but we'll see if yeah. it's something different. Cool. Love. <laughs> Great. Okay. Any, any superpower, paranormal ability, it's anchored. You have it forever. What is it? God, you know what came to me was like, like the ability to always show all of my feelings on my sleeve all the time, mm. always, always. Wow. What a weird superpower! But that's what because it feels so good when you can yeah. feel like that. It's like you're walking in constant orgasm. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I want. That sounds beautiful. It's like mm. clear, not clear sentience. It's like clear emotionality. I don't even know how to like word that. If someone knows how to language that, drop it in the comments. Um, <laughs> all right, next question. $100 million is deposited in your bank account tonight. What's your first move? Mm, $100 million. Obsidian dildos for everyone's anal play. Yes. <laughs> everyone. What the fuck? Yes. This is so good. This is so good. <laughs> I mean, because wow. you know what? It's, it's a play. It's a dance. Like, fuck it. Why not? Like, why yeah. the fuck not? Everyone needs obsidian dildos. Go. <laughs> there we go. There's the spell. There's the spell. <laughs> wow. Okay, next question. Next question. <laughs> kind of in the similar lines. You can build your ideal temple compound home anywhere in the world. Tell me about it and where is it? It's right here. <laughs> right here on this video right here in new york city right, right, right here, now on right this now. video Fuck yeah. with, right here i'm in new york city but that doesn't really matter i'm also in sure. bali right now i'm also in costa rica right now <laughs> so it's yeah. like it's right here inside the skin inside my body mm, i see what you did there the body temple well played yeah. well played Thanks. madame i didn't think um, about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what i'm that's what i'm asking here <laughs> Cool, cool. All right, last question. Um, aliens land on the White House lawn tomorrow. UFOs. Awesome. Good. What What is your <laughs> What is your first like message or like diplomacy in meeting our Star Nation family? I would want to have sex with them. I knew it. Because then I could see them. Like no. I want to. I'd want to experience their sexual energy and know what's there and what's underneath of it and what's behind yep. it and and meet them and then they yeah. can meet me and they can meet our humanity and they'll be like oh i got you i, I got you. you i know about this all right and then there's no <laughs> words needed you know wow well, beautiful perfect <laughs> wow well there's there's like 10 or 12 next level thought bomb nuggets that will radically alter your sex life and change how you show up erotically to life itself and in your own body and i invite anyone who'd missed those to tag someone share this video out genevieve you're amazing i want to play with you more you. and yeah. i would love for you to share like what is exciting and coming up in your business and your vision how can people play with you mm, well my latest um goddess goddess vision i got it last night during a uh, orgasm was just to have, this is where I get all my visions, was to have everyone who's meant to work with me contact me this month so that the rest of my year is booked out with people. Nice. Of just like, 
I know who my tribe, like here you guys are, right? Um, so that like helped me manifest that guys. It's really not even manifest, like fucking just magnetize. Like, I'm like, rec I'm receiving it. And yeah. um, the one on one work is is what I love more than anything, because I get to see the shadow and dive into it. Um, yeah. And I'm currently booked up through end of April. So we're getting there. Um, <laughs> so that's it. That's the that's the most exciting piece for me really is, is to just have the people and, and experience the hearts of the people that are ready to have light um, and to have their sexual freedom finally, you know, in their bodies. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, there you go, fam. If you want to reach out to Genevieve, I would highly recommend it, especially women. Yeah. As you can tell, she's a wealth and a treasure mind of knowledge and more importantly, experience and mm -hmm. a beautiful guide in this work. And yeah, I'm so grateful for you. Thank you for sharing wisdom. Thank you for sharing your sexiness. This conversation has me turned on, activated. I'm going to carry it into the rest of my day. I love your turn on. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. I hope this has turned you on, fam. <laughs> Wherever you're listening to this, give us a shout out. Tell us what you thought. Like, share, comment. Sharing is caring. And I really invite, <laughs> invite you to tag a man or woman who's ready to liberate their sexual energy and experience full embodiment, pleasure, prosperity, and power. Yes. That's what's good. Genevieve, so much love. So much love. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh... See y'all, fam. <laughs> ciao, ciao.